Welcome to Activista Rise Up. I am Dr. Patricia Campos Medina. Today, I have two very special guests, two uh, women pioneers who are business entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, political leaders, and also producers of a very special HBO series, The Latino List. Welcome, Catherine uh, Pino and Ingrid Duran, my dear friends uh, from Poder Pack. Thank you for being here for me, with me this morning. Thank you for having us, Patricia. Yeah, yeah thank you. This is awesome. Oh, Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. This has been a, a labor of love, like everything we do as women, right? It's something that I've been trying to do for a long time, but I'm always too busy, but I never stop being busy, so I just have to get it done. <laughs> right. We hope to pass. That's right. And I'm glad you're doing this. It's so important. Yes. So I wanted to just, um, you know, the three of us met when I was a, a young lobbyist in Washington, D.C., uh, representing labor. And I was appointed to the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, where Ingrid, you were the executive director at that point. Right. And Catherine, uh, you were a board member. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember going into those meetings and realizing that there were only very few Latina members of Congress. It must have been like three at that point or four. Yeah. Uh, and I remember just sitting there and starting to think and talking to Grace and Hilda um, and Lucille, and we're saying like we gotta change these dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we you know, I we, I can talk the whole show about that, but we won't start there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I first wanted to talk a little bit about you um, as as business entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs. Um, because I remember after you left uh, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, um, Ingrid, you started your own firm with, with Catherine at DMP Creative Strategies. So, uh, but you remain being social entrepreneurs. So I wanted to start there because you have done so much since then. But tell us a little bit about, you know, what DMP is and your impetus for starting the firm and become one of the key cast lat Latina on love, you know, firms in DC, which I was so proud of of you when you did that. Thank you, Patricia. Well, as you know, I think DMP was a labor of love for us. Um, literally, it's when Catherine and I came together, both in life and in business. Um, we came together as as partners in life and as business owners, and we created the business as a way to really bridge a gap between two communities that we come from, which are the Latino and the LGBT communities. Yeah. And we felt like there was not a firm in DC in 2004 that was representing that intersection. And we felt like we could fill that gap and really make a difference. And back then, as you recall, LGBT issues were kind of taboo, yes. right? So yeah. for us to do that at that time was a big deal. And we caused a little bit of a scandal in, in the DC <laughs> Latino community. <laughs> sort of a yeah. scandal. But I think we also both really felt too that, um, well, we had great positions. I was in foundation land, as I yes. like to say, and Ingrid was uh, running CHCI. We felt impeded in some ways by the bureaucracy, certainly the managing staff, managing boards. And for me, at least, and, and actually for Ingrid too, we couldn't get politically engaged. And we felt in order to do sort of what we had in terms of creating this beautiful vision of the world, that we also needed to find ways to become politically engaged. So I think for both of us, we felt let's create our own thing. You know, We have nothing to lose. Let's just try it. Let's go for it. And it's really allowed us to have um, to be open and to have a lot of opportunity to do different kinds of projects, um, as I like to say, to save the world. <laughs> yes. And I mean, I, yeah, I want to repeat that because I remember when you that was early 2000s when you uh, launched the firm and you as you said, we are, you know, we are a couple. We are, uh, you know, we are proud to be members of the LGBTQ community and we are going to to act and, and engage in this process as that and bring that diversity to the political debate. That was risky because the Latino community has always been there, but there hasn't been this acceptance of all the diversity that exists even within our community. So I've been, uh, you were brave and you were um, pioneers in where 
political consulting and not just political consulting, but business uh, management it has to go, understanding the diversity within our own community. So have you seen progression in the way your business has begun and the way it is today in terms of assistance and creating opportunities for you to be able to be your authentic selves. And why would you tell a lot of young Latinos who are part of this community and are still hesitant because they have to deal with some of the um, o o a cultural bias that we have in the Hispanic community still when it comes to issues of LGBTQ? Yeah, you know, when we started the business in 2004, many people and friends of ours said, are you sure you're gonna be out? And you're sure, you're sure you're gonna, you know, you wanna have this business and politics and be openly gay. And we said, you know what? It, we've worked too hard and too long to go back yeah. to the closet now, and we're not gonna go back into the closet. And for that very reason, because there were so many young Latinos and Latinas coming behind us who need to know that it's okay. It's okay yeah. to be your authentic self and to live your authentic life. And we've been doing it for the last 16, almost 17 years. And we have seen progress in, in we've been working at making that progress happen. Uh, we saw marriage equality pass. Yeah. Difficult thing. Um, but in 2015, Catherine and I were married. I and remember you had the best wedding. I remember I saw it from afar. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Sotomayor was uh, yes. created. Yes. Very she good. officiated our wedding. It was her first gay wedding after it became federal law. And uh, it was, it for us, it was the culmination of, you know, everything that we've been working so hard to achieve, but it didn't mean that, that we were done, right? right. Yes. Um, and there, there's still so much, especially under this environment, there's yeah. so much more work yeah. that has to be done. And, and I... <laughs> You're absolutely right. And um, I know that Judge, uh, Supreme Court Justice Sotomayor married you because he respected your career, both in, in business and in public life and supporting other Latinas. So I wanna go there because um, you, you, have, you have elevated so many issues for Latinos in, uh, in DC, but also all over the country engaging artists and engaging um, the history of our community through the work that you do as producers for uh, HBO. I know uh, the Latino list, I have it here. Hey. I did buy it. <laughs> I've seen some of the shows. So, but what else um, are you working on or have you worked on? Because I do think that elevating our history, our experiences is how our lives become real to the general public. So that, why can we talk a little bit about that and how you have brought, brought in that part of the world, world to meet celebrities and to meet other Latinas to be part of this movement to empower uh, young Latinas and young Latinos? That's right, Patricia. In 2009, um, we, we met the producers of what was the blacklist. I think there were three um, volumes of it and it was produced on HBO and we partnered with them to produce the Latino list. We had uh, two volumes of the, that as well. Two, is it volumes? Yeah, two, two volumes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then, uh, we went on to do the out list with them, the women's list, uh, the boomer list, and the last film we worked on was the trans, trans list yeah. because one of the things we wanted to do when we created this business was to tell stories of various um, people in our communities and try and get those stories out there. And this was one way of doing it. And as you know, this is a labor of love for you. This was our labor of love. It continu continues to be our labor of love. Um, we're still trying to raise money for other important films, but we were able to do that. A, a couple of other things that we did was we created Guadet Pack um, in yes. 2008, yes. after uh, the when Hillary conceded the first time, we were very engaged in that campaign. We went across the country. We met so many different Latinas, and uh, we wanted to figure out a way to harness that energy after we were all sort of deflated. After yes, yes, yes. And so we came together with a dear friend of ours who has since passed, Grace Garcia, and we created Poder Pack. Yes, I, I remember that. I remember, Ingrid, you calling me uh, yes. and saying, Patricia, you want to join us in this effort to create Poder Pack. 
um, the first political action committee to get Latinas elected. That's um, right. Uh, to That's office. right. Yeah. And as Catherine said, I, I remember the day very well. It was the day that Hillary made her concession speech at the uh, National Building Museum. And then afterwards, several of us were invited to a private reception across the street from what is now a restaurant called- um, 701. No, the, it's uh, one of Jose Andres's restaurants. Oh, uh, across the street. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> so after we left there totally deflated, right? We went across the street with Grace and we ordered a pitcher of margaritas. And we were like, how do we- Who no way to get inspired. <laughs> one of our pitcher of margaritas. And we were like, how do we harness the Latina voices that came together during the Hillary Clinton's campaign that were mobilized, that were giving money and giving their resources and giving their time and hitting the streets. How do we mobilize those voices? And how do what do we how do what do we do with them? Right. And we yeah. said, let's create a pack to support Latinas running for office at all levels. And at that time in 2008, when we launched, every Latina member, there were five Latinas in Congress at that time. Every one of them maxed out to the pack mm -hmm. and joined as honorary co-chairs along with Eva Longoria and Rosario Dawson, yes. America Ferreira. And they, they gave their time and their resources and they felt that it was important. And in, I think it was 2015, remember we reorganized, yes. become laser focused on Congress and getting Latinas into Congress. Yeah, you know, one of the things we found out when we were on the first uh, Hillary campaign um, traveling the country, we met all these amazing Latinas and they were all saying, there weren't resources out there for them. Yes. And so that was one of the reasons we started this because we really wanted to find a way to harness the resources in the community as well, to help Latinas, to help build the pipeline, right? The bench for all these amazing Latinas that were running for school board member all the way up to Congress and eventually president. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we love all that pack and, yes. uh, and that's why uh, we created it. Well, I remember, um, you know, you calling me and say, would you join the board and help us build this pack? And I was like, hell yeah. If I can build a network of other uh, Latinas, I'm all for that. Because I remember, you know, when I was uh, a young lobbyist in, in, in DC, there were so few Latinas and I, and I remember we would support each other in building the network yeah. in like figuring out who were the Latinos in which congressional office and where would, how we can create relationships and then how do we have relationship with the Latina members of Congress and the Latino members. So the whole idea of creating a network for us to be able to work together and build ourselves professional to me has always appealed, appealed to me. So I, uh, Following on the footsteps of 2008, when we found the Poder Pack, I also threw myself into organizing um, and supporting the, the organizing of Lupe Pack here in New Jersey, uh, <laughs> because we also felt like we needed to build a bench of Latinas at the local level that we can get elect to Congress one day. So and we're still hoping to send you a Latina from New Jersey to Congress. That would be amazing. And I have no doubt that you will soon. Yes, yes. Too, Patricia. Yes. We love it. I never say never. That's right, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I think just building the platform for other, like, other young women to find a place where they can use their skills is so essential. And that's why I always um, supported the effort that you have built. Uh, for all of us to stay connected and, and, and get people like Eva Langoria. I was so proud to see her hosting the, DN, the DNC uh, yeah. and how good she is and all that she does, you know, because it's not that. Like I, I always say Eva does so much for the community because of where she came from. That's it. absolutely right. And we just had her on an event for five of our Latina candidates that were supporting through Poder yes. Pat with the two Tejanas who won in the last cycle Veronica Escobar and Sylvia Garcia. And we reached out to Eva and we said, will you do this for us? Will you, you know, join and, and kind of anchor this event? And she's like, absolutely. And she has always, always put her resources, her voice, her platform to use for the community. And I, I really respect that because she yeah. does put her money where her mouth is. Yes, she does. Yes. Yeah. So, Building up on that, so Poder Pack has uh, endorsed uh, Biden Harris ticket, and we have a very uh, exciting campaign which I am um, I signed up for 
the moment you sent it to me and we signed up in New Jersey, the Chingonas campaign. Can you talk a little bit about what we're doing and how people can become a Chingona uh, and join for their pack? Sure, sure. And, you know, we were excited. This is the first time we have endorsed, other than Hillary, right? Yes. That we've endorsed in the presidential election. And we really felt like it was important. This is the election that is the most consequential election of our lifetime, right? Yes. And for Latinos in particular, it's important that we get engaged, that we vote. And, and we know that Latinas are the drivers in our families, right? Yes. And Latinas, where Latinas go, so goes the rest of our family and our community. So we felt if we could engage Latinas in a way through social media, and I don't know if folks on, who are watching this know what Chingona is, but a Chingona is a badass. Yes. <laughs> we all know that, that Latinas are Chingonas. Badass, yes. We mand on our families, right? And yes. we run things. And so we felt like if we got Latinas engaged politically through social media, because things have to be done virtually in this election cycle, um, that we would help in swaying the vote on November 3rd. And this campaign is really to mobilize Latinas, their families, their children, their neighbors, their cousins, whatever, um, to get involved and to vote, to turn out the vote on November 3rd. Yes. Uh, election for president and defeating Donald Trump, I agree, is a number one priority because we cannot go back on our basics right as women if we allow him to, uh, to uh, take back um, total control of the Supreme Court. So for me, as a, you know, as a uh, pro pro choice uh, uh, Latina, that issue for me drives drives home, right? Um, but also, we need to be able to get more of us elected to office in Congress and in Senate. In the Congress, back from when we started, we only have four. Now we have twelve Latinas, right? And right. we have way more Latinas. And we have a senator. Is that a yeah. senator? Yeah. That's yes. right. That's master. Yes, that's just touching the, the surface. So how exactly. can we help for their pack? Make sure that Latinas who are now running for Congress, and perhaps you can tell us what where those races are, in which we can contribute directly or help for their pack continue to support them so that they can come to Congress and defend our issues, but also be our voice um, in Congress. Yeah, so we have five, as I mentioned, Latinas running for Congress right now. I think we had a slate of nine overall this election cycle, but five have, have remained and won their primaries. And they're in California. Uh, we have Georgette Gomez, who is the Speaker of the City Council, who's running. Awesome. We have Teresa Ledger Fernandez in New Mexico, who won her primary as well. Um, we have Candace Valenzuela in Texas. Uh, who won her primary and will likely come to Congress along with Teresa. Georgette is in a runoff. Yeah. Um, and then we have in Kansas, Michelle de la Isla, who's yeah. running for Congress. And, yeah. and that is a, it's a race that we could win because there is a, a woman running on the Democratic ticket for Senate who could win her race in Kansas. And so, as you know, when all boats are floated from the top, um, Hope there's movement and open it. Right. right. And, I, and we also have Christina Hill in Indiana. Right. And I just want to mention that too, because both Kansas and Indiana, these are new states for us where we have, yeah. you know, some fabulous Latinas that are, that have made it and are really poised to win, especially as I'm hoping if we have a huge blue wave. Yeah. But Patricia, you know, you asked how, how people can help. I think you know, you can help by donating to Poded Pack. I think Poded Pack also is poised to work with like Lupe Pack and some of the other statewide or regional packs to help build the the, the bench yeah. locally. Yeah. And we don't do training. I mean, Poded Pack is, as you know, all volunteer run. So we need to really connect with groups that do the training so we can help Latinas you know, really learn how do you build those winning campaigns. Yeah. It, you know, we here in New Jersey have spent a lot of energy figuring out how do we train the candidates, how we help them move up from local races, from the city council to for mayor, um, to run for state legislator's office. And most of the time they don't win, but I always tell them it is about putting yourself out there and learning the process 
of raising money, of the process of creating a coalition, right? So when we, and I am, I mean, I, I am a board member, so I do know a little bit of this, but I am biased too. So, but I will ask you, um, I am very proud of the work we've done at Poder Park, but I want to ask you, what do you look for? Or what does the board of Poder Park look for before deciding to endorse a Latina for Congress? Uh, because yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And, and Poder Pack is, we, we were very clear when we were formed, as you know, it's a Democrat, pro-choice, Latina pack, right? So yeah. first of all, you have to meet that criteria. You have to be a Democrat, you have to be pro-choice, and you have to be Latina. And then secondarily, you have to show a demonstrated track record of commitment to the Latino community and be very clear that there's no fuzziness on these issues, right? You have to be very firm in your position and you have to show viability. Um, for us, it's not, I think, you know, we all know Latinas need resources to win. So if you can show that you're doing the work, you're raising the money, you know your demographics, you understand your district, you can lay it out in your application as we ask you to do, right? We always ask for yeah. all their background information. Yes, we do, yes. Yeah, then, um, we are likely to support you if you can demonstrate that you've got a viable campaign. Uh, the most, yes, the most important thing for me has always been in the different races that we have evaluated is what kind of network they have built to support their, their mm -hmm. campaign, right? Because it's not just about money, it's about uh, the network that they build with other, uh, other progressive organizations with labor unions. So uh, building, spending the time on building the relationships. That's right. And that, that is one of the things that Catherine mentioned, we don't do training. However, we do, once you're a Poder Pack endorsed candidate, we do connect you to networks and we will pass along numbers and lists of phone numbers for them to call. And Veronica can tell you personally, because we, we created a list for her that helped raise her money. Um, and so once you're in our network, we'll connect you to other Latina members of Congress. We ask, we get, get them involved in endorsing them as well individually in their own right. Um, so it's, it's all about networking and helping them and yeah. So I you know because of the times that we live in, we don't get together uh, as often anymore, but I, I always look forward to our annual gatherings uh, that we had as for their park on the hill. Yeah. Where we get to, oh, yeah. Yes, I, I remember the last that we went to, it was in the townhouse of the hill. That's right, yeah. It was phenomenal. I always get to meet younger Latinas and all the staffers. So hopefully we'll get to do that again soon. <laughs> I hope so. I, I, you know, we're praying. Yeah. Definitely. I think if we if we have a change on November third, <laughs> it'll come sooner than yeah. we expect, right? Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, gatherings on Zoom had been great. I had joined some of the sessions, so I appreciate the connection and the network that we have nationally, from folks from New Mexico to Colorado to California. Uh, it is, it is, uh, has been uh, um, amazing. But before, um, before we uh, finish this interview, what is in store for the two of you? What are you working on uh, on, a, on, a, on a business level? Because you, I always see you as a social entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur, but you also have a social conscience and want to deal with the issues uh, that our community is facing. So, what is the, your latest project? And um, as you know, as a social entrepreneurs, and, and so how we can stay connected with you and that type and that work that you do. Sure, sure. So um, obviously, we're still running our business. So we're, yes. still, we're still lobbying. We're still doing public affairs, and and everything that we do is tied to the community in some ways. We we do have corporate clients, and we help them connect with the Latino community. And then we have some nonprofit clients. And we have one of our, our big nonprofit clients is Justice for Migrant Women. And that is a network of over 700,000 Latina farm workers across the country um, who during this pandemic, as we know, they've always been essential workers, but yeah. during this pandemic, they've been deemed essential workers. And yeah. that means they have to continue to show up to work. Um, and they don't have the protections and the PPE and all that, that necessary um, equipment to continue to do their work. And so we've been advocating for them and helping with the, the farm worker fund um, and relief effort to really raise the visibility of their stories um, and their lives and what they're dealing with on the ground, right? Um, and then, you know, we work with Unidos. Um, yes. They're one of our clients. And 
Um, you know, they're also lifting up the community every day via the 300 affiliates across the country. So for us, it's, it's always about maintaining that connection between the Latino community and our work and also the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we are very proud of that we did on a personal level because he's not Latina, so we couldn't support him via Poder Pack, but we <laughs> with Torres yes. for, for Serrano's seat in the Bronx. And I, I'm sure you followed it closely being in the neighboring yes. state. There yes. were uh, nine candidates running in that yes. seat and very formidable candidates. And Richie, who is, will be the first Afro Latino LGBTQ candidate in wow. Congress ever. Yeah. The intersectionality of so many. Yes. There. Yeah. yes, he won his primary and, and hopefully he will be, we know he'll be a, a congressional Hispanic caucus member, but he will also is applying to be a congressional black caucus member, which will be a first. And he'll be an LGBTQ equality caucus member. So that intersectionality, as you mentioned, that's the wave of the future. And, and we, as Latinas, as part of the LGBTQ community, that's something important to us, mm -hmm. that we support the future of our community. And the future of our community is multicultural, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be very different than the traditional, um, I guess, Congress of the past, right? Yes. Yes. Where mainly men, now it's going to be men and women, LGBTQ, uh, multicultural, multilingual, and they have, you know, they come from different walks of life. So yeah, and important. both of us are on boards that are really working to make that change. So I serve on the Victory Institute and the Victory Board. You know, we're trying to get LGBT candidates to, you know, develop winning campaigns across the country. Uh, Ingrid serves on Voto Latino. Yes, we're just. Um, we're laser focused right now on this election because we really, really need to have this man in the White House lead. And uh, so we're focused on raising money for, you know, Biden Harris. We are focused on getting out the Latino vote, getting out the vote in general. So we're doing everything and anything we can to make that happen. Yes. And I would say that you, for me, are the example of business entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship <laughs> and, and how you can merge your you know your entrepreneurial spirit and your social conscious to to invest in the issues that impact our community you know we are building political power for our community we are growing and i always tell latinos we have to bring our resources so that we can create that political voice for ourselves uh, in the country. And it's exciting that it's multicultural uh, and it's, uh, it's all, all, of, all of who we are as Latinos because we're not just, uh, we're not just one, no, we're just not Mexicans, we're just not you know, uh, immigrants, we're not just uh, people from New York City, we are different experiences. So it's exciting. And I thank you for being part of the vanguard of leading uh, uh, a, a company in being entrepreneur, but also investing uh, in social uh, causes and leading those causes as uh, in your own from your own political capital. So thank you for being role models for that community. And you know, so. thank you. It's it's uh, it's our we feel it's our responsibility, and we feel it's our duty to to pick up the mantle and to do the hard work and roll up our sleeves and. So it's, it's really, it's an honor to do it. It is, and that's it why is. we created DMP Creative Strategies, so we could do all of these different that's things right. and help change the world. Awesome. Well, with that, I wanna thank you for inspiring me to do this work and for supporting me when I was a young uh, uh, lobbyist and, and for being connected to this work with me uh, for, the last, uh, for the last 10, 15 years. I really uh, consider you a role model for me. So thank you for the time. And we will continue getting Latina selected and we will win on November 3rd. That's right. Vote. Yes, vote. Yes, yes. let's oh. vote. Thank, thank you, Ingrid. Patricia. Thank you, Patricia. Enjoy our conversation. Yeah. As citizens of this country, we can make a difference in any way we can, whether you're a business entrepreneur, whether you're a volunteer, 
whether you're a community organizer, it is our engagement on our communities, driving the issues that matter to our uh, community that makes the difference. I am Dr. Patricia Campos Medina, and this is Activista Rise Up, a forum by activists for activists.